Your Eminence, when you came to our first conference, you spoke to us about your visions for the church. And uh, thank the good Lord you've been able to implement many of them. The people here today are church people. They're people that come from different metropolises, different areas of youth, education, but we're all one church and we're all one archdiocese. Could you please elaborate for us uh, the differences that are going to happen, if any, with your vision for a new charter or a few revisions? Because we're anxious to hear from you how you actually foresee the charter. Thank you. This is the subject that I would like to focus on mostly today. Uh, I won't come in from Europe because this is obvious that I'm coming from Europe. I'm in a, in a more uh, privileged, if I may say, uh, place to see the bigger picture for our archdiocese. Because we involved with the everyday business and life of the church, sometimes we, we forget what we are here in America. The Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America is the biggest Orthodox jurisdiction in the United States, by far, in every sense, in every way. Keep this always in mind. Without the Ecumenical Patriarchate, this Archdiocese is just another sect, successful Protestant megachurch. Without the Archdiocese of America, the Ecumenical Patriarchate is weak. These things go together. We need the Ecumenical Patriarchate, and the Ecumenical Patriarchate need us. I'm addressing now the leaders. You understand exactly what I mean. We are doing this with, by supporting um, the uh, mission everywhere. Project Mexico is here, which is not GOA project. It's another jurisdiction. It's Mexico. There is another archdiocese of the Ecumenical Patriarchate there. And even Project Mexico is not even part of the Ecumenical Patriarchate's jurisdiction in Mexico. It's Antiochian. But we are the ones who support this. Without GOA, this project would be dead. Without us, many of the missions all around the world would be dead. So... We are now in a much different position than we were 100 years ago. It's not difficult for you to realize and understand this in full scale because look at your kids and your grandchildren. Where are they? They are not the ones who came from the Horyo. They are not even you who succeeded. They are beyond. They are there where I want our archdiocese to be in the next 100 years. We are not there where our children are. And then we wonder why they are not with us, why they are not attending the churches, why they are not attending the projects. Because we, if we don't follow their steps, because we have to follow them, if we don't follow their steps and reach out to them where they are, we are staying behind. We think we are successful, but we are losing the momentum, and we are losing the present and the future. And this is the vision that I have for the church, and that's why I want all of us to be connected with the same mentality, not focusing on the personal uh, plans or interests that we have as leaders. And I'm talking first to myself. Any plan for the future of the Archdiocese and the new charter cannot be based on the arrogance that the Archbishop has or the plans that he wants to show off as a leader or to, based on the Metropolitan's plans to keep their position or their authority or to the local parish presidents to keep their authority and the little kingdom that we all have created all over the United States. We are Americans. And we need to mean that when we say we are Americans. We cannot be Atlantas, we cannot be Chicago's, we cannot be San Francisco's, we cannot be New York's. 
We are Americans, and this new reality has to reflect our new church structure and new charter that we are trying to build. This is the general uh, approach that I have for the uh, Archdiocese and for the Charter. We have a mixed commission in the Charter. The mixed commission already met in Constantinople for the first time. We agreed upon very few things that are the first steps for the next steps. First, we said the Archdiocese of America is an inseparable part of the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Axiom number one. Number two, the Archdiocese is one. It's not a composition, a mosaic of metropolises and districts and uh, chapters or whatever. It's not a confederation. It's one Archdiocese. Third axiom is that whatever comes from this new charter cannot shake, cannot remove the local structures and the local uh, councils. What does this mean practically? Practically means that the metropolis councils cannot change. They have to be there. We need the local administration. We cannot remove the metropolitans. The metropolitans are the persons who lead our churches locally for the decades. We need to respect them. There is no way of bringing the metropolitan from the rank of a metropolitan down to the rank of a bishop. You cannot do that in the church. And it's not the right thing to do. And based upon these uh, elementary uh, axioms and uh, foundations, we as a first step, we decided that every parish in the United States, every parish during the services should commemorate first the name of the ecumenical patriarch. Because if you go to the parishes and the Sunday schools, ask the, 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 the children or the faithful, who is the Pope? They all know who the Pope is. Ask them who is the ecumenical patriarch and you see that they are much less than the ones who know who the Pope is. So the ecumenical patriarch's name should be commemorated in all parishes across the United States. Second, the name of the Archbishop has to be commemorated in all the parishes. <laughs> because our people get confused if you go to a certain parish says, for our Archbishop X, and the other party says Archbishop Elpidophoros, then people are, how many archbishops we have in the United States? <laughs> are we one archdiocese or a compilation of metropolises? This is dangerous for our future. Let us go back and see, remember, because I see that most of us are at the age we can remember how this charter and when this charter was formed. It was after uh, Archbishop Iacobos of blessed memory when the Archdiocese of South and North America was uh, divided in different metropolises and archdioceses and our archdiocese was restricted only to the United States. Then it was Spiridon time. We all know what happened during the Spiridon time. The metropolitans wanted to have a special role in the church. The ecumenical patriarchate could not resist because of the failure of the Archbishop Spiridon, to be honest. And then it was this structure established where we have many archbishops, many structures, duplication and triplication and catriplation of ministries and expenses in every place. And we are facing now the danger of fragmentation and division. We cannot risk that. We have a role to play in this planet as an Orthodox Church, as a communical patriarchate, as the Orthodox Church of the superpower of the world, and in this country we, where we need to develop ministries that are unseen before, like expanding to the other communities the Afro-American community, 
the uh, Spanish-speaking community, to all communities, 